Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today I'm using a couple of different uh, products. I am using the Square Silhouettes, the Freshly Picked Stamps, Dyes, and Stencils, the Sandy Shore Stamps, and then the, I think they're, I, <laughs> it's perfect, perfect, uh, sentiments, which match this set. So we're going to make two different cards today. We are going to talk a lot about beginning Copic coloring. It's just going to be a little bit later in the video, um, since I prefer to do my backgrounds first. So if you're looking for that information, you're going to want to jump to like the eight minute mark. Um, so here I'm using Distress Oxides and my uh, freshly picked stencil to just create kind of like a fun summer background of a bunch of different fruits. I'm using two colors per fruit, and then I'm using my um, Post-It masking tape. It just comes out a roll, which is super easy to just like rip off the size piece that you need. And that's just to mask off the other shapes to make sure I don't get anything where I don't want it. Uh, as I say this to you, see that flower at the very top that I didn't mask? Don't worry, I got green on that. But I'm going to show you how to fix it. <laughs> because that's really what my whole game plan is on my channel. Is like, here's this thing you can do, and if you mess it up, here's how you can fix it. Um, for most things, I can do that. So I'm just kind of randomly placing these um, fruits down. I'm going to fix it by putting, so I used green. I'm going to put the yellow lemon right on top of it because the green will blend in really nicely with that and you'll never even see it. So if you get a spot or a fingerprint or something on your background that you don't want, um, see if there's another... Um, whatever portion you're stenciling. If there's another something you can put over top of it to just kind of mask it. Otherwise, the alternative to that is um, just placing your focal images in a way that would cover up any of those boo-boos um, with your card design. So I chose to use Distress Oxides um, specifically because they kind of dried, because they have those pigment properties, they dry down a bit softer, and so I knew my Copic coloring was going to be pretty bright, so that would, um, it would enhance the card and the stenciling wouldn't distract from the card. Um, and so that's why I chose Distress Oxides. Second reason I chose them is because for the stamping portion of this background, Distress Oxides stamp beautifully because of those pigment properties. Distress Inks, not so much. If you wanted um, a little bit of a bolder background, you could do your inking with Distress Inks and then do your stamping with Oxides. That would also be a combination that would work really well. So, so far we've gotten the pear, the lemon, the oranges. This is the peach. Um, and for this one, I went with the dried marigold and then the um, so like shadow color is ripe persimmon. Um, that just seemed to kind of make the perfect pinky peach color. Um, but I would also encourage you maybe to try some pinks as well um, that would give you uh, a good peach color. Um, so if you have been following my channel, you know uh, it's been a little bit crazy around here lately and I haven't posted anything for over a week. Let's talk about the strawberry. So the strawberry is the only fruit in this stencil that's two different parts and that's because the actual body of the fruit, you know, is your typical reddish pink and then the top of the fruit is green. So I just did the pink part first, I put that down, and then I'm going to go back in with the stencil, line up the top of it with the negative space um, from the body of the fruit, and then tape that off and do that um, with the green. Something else to note, I'm reusing all of my pieces of tape um, just because I'm cheap and I don't want to use my supplies, but um, please be aware, I purposely worked in a way that my lighter colors would be first and my darker colors would be last because the ink doesn't necessarily dry on the um, tape because it's non-porous. Uh, you can transfer ink, so that's just something to be aware of. For the stamping of the background, like I'm taking the actual stamp of the outline stamp of the uh, fruit and just stamping it down, I am intentionally stamping these slightly off. 
So I'm doing my best to use my acrylic block to line them up straight and then I'm turning them a little to the left or a little to the right. That way I don't feel like I have to get everything perfectly centered and it makes sense with my card um, that all of them are just slightly off kilter. That way, you know, there's not all this pressure to be perfect and it still looks like it's purposeful and intentional. Um, so just something to keep in mind when you're building these types of backgrounds. The only other one, again, is that strawberry that's a little bit tricky um, just because you have two colors. So I inked them up um, at the same time. I just let the green part hang off of the red and I let the red part hang off of the green ink pad. Do I have some red in my leaves? Yes. Do I have some green in my strawberry? Yes. Do I think that's a big deal? No, I do not. Uh, so it doesn't bother me. If it bothers you, you could stamp them individually, but you just heighten your chance um, that you're going to have a, you know, a, a mishap for alignment. So here, these are the, um, the squares, the, the, St what are they? I think they're called the stamp silhouettes. They're the square ones, but there's a lot of um, spotlights. That's what they are. Um, square spotlight. There's a lot of plastic stencils and there's a lot of different shapes in the store. I chose the square just because I had a lot of roundness going on with the images I chose. Um, but these are really good if you want to do some ink blending and block out a space or if you want a nice um, even like border. These are really good for that. Um, so I'm going to be using, this is the Sandy Shores background, and this is actually f to create like a sandy look, but I thought it was super fun. It's kind of like a rainbow colored confetti. So I'm using the same Distress Oxides that I used in the previous background. Um, and it's hard to see when I'm inking them up, but I'm actually holding them at an angle. So just the corner of the ink pad is pressing down, so that way I'm not contaminating my ink pad and I'm not putting down too much ink so that I can't fit the rest of the inks on there. So I'm just going to work all the way down from red all the way down to my darkest green. And then with these larger backgrounds, I find I have much better luck getting a good impression. If I flip my paper over on top of the background, so I have that uh, Tombow Bunna Multi Glue, which is a little bit sticky on the back of my mask to hold it in place. And then I'm just going to use a scrap piece of paper to hold my card with one hand and give good pressure with the other. And then I'm going to switch and do the same thing. Because these Distress Oxides um, stamp really well, uh, I got a really great impression, even though it was just a slightly off-center, but because it has like this little party confetti look, it's not anything that's terribly noticeable. Um, here, you want to make sure that you just remove your mask straight away, that you don't like try to wipe it off because you could risk smearing it on your background. This is where we're going to get into the Copic coloring. So... We're stamping them down. The first thing that you want to make sure that you're doing with Copic coloring is making sure that you have a Copic safe ink. If you have an ink that is not, it does not say alcohol uh, marker safe on the back of it, you will smear that ink and it will ruin your image. So if you're brand new to Copic coloring, you want to make sure that you have a good ink. There's a lot of them out on the market. I am using Honeybees um, alcohol safe ink. This is the, I think it's intense black, and I'm just going to go ahead and stamp this down. These are all of the images that I'm going to use for both cards. Um, I did add a couple of extras in there that you didn't see in the stenciled background. I added in the watermelon, the little lemon or lemon lime or orange slice, and then the sliced pear. First things first, when you're selecting your colors, you want to make sure that you have a light, a medium, and a dark. If you watch my channel, you know that I typically like to color with four color blends, but for beginners, three is just fine. When you're selecting your colors, you want to make sure that the colors are far enough apart that they make a difference. So they shouldn't be so similar to each other. Um, that you're not seeing any sort of shading. It's not going to give you any dimension. You're not going to be happy with your coloring. 
here for this lemon. It's going to look a little crazy because I'm going with a YO2, a YO8, and a YR24. And you're going to be like, Kelly, that's so dark. And you're right, it is dark. But see how we have the majority of it are medium tone? That's what you want. Your middle color should be the majority of what you see. Because of the way Copics are, they blend in the fibers of your paper. So the more ink you have down, the better off you'll have, uh, you'll be with the blending. But there's something to be aware of with that because you can have your images bleed. And this is a problem that I had a lot when I first started coloring with Copic markers. My markers would bleed outside the lines. That's what this lemon is doing right now. Look in the bottom left hand corner, it's already starting to bleed out. In order to fix that, take your zero, your colorless blender, and we're going to push the ink back into the image. So you're just going to, you know, push it and then you're going to move on to the next spot. You can't keep going over the same spot. It just puts more moisture down and causes the ink to spread more. You need to give it a second to dry in between and then you can go back and rework it. This will work for 75% of the time. Um, that you just gotta be patient with it and keep going over it and keep working it and letting it dry in between. So important. If you have a red, very challenging. A red is very challenging with the bleeding. I'm not gonna pretend like it's not. So that's one of our tips. You'll notice, like I said, because they blend in the fibers of the paper, that even though that YR24 was really dark when we put it down, it didn't stay that way. It didn't stay that way because Copics are transparent, and so you can layer them over each other, and a lighter color will lighten up a darker color. So if you fill it in all the way with your, like that's what we're doing with the orange, all of our light colors... And I showed you earlier on in the beginning of the video, I chose to have my light source be in the top right, so all my shadows will be to the bottom left. I will color all of the fruits this way. Um, so here, I'm just following the edge of that orange, and I'm putting down my middle color, and then I'm going to go in with my darkest, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to follow that same edge. Now, you don't have to put this much dark in. I like... Um, to be able to go back and remove some of that with my middle color so that it blends a little bit better when you're only working with a three color blend. But don't be afraid to go over it, just give it time to dry a little bit in between. It does need the moisture to blend, but if you just keep hammering it, if you just keep hammering away at it, you're going to get the bleeding outside of the lines. In images like this, me personally, I don't think it's a big deal because I'm going to be die cutting these out and they're all going to be stacked up together. And so if there's a little bit of bleeding, it's not going to be a huge deal. But it can be very troubling if you're doing something more of a scene card where it's bleeding into your other colors. If you find that you're doing a scene card or you have two images next to each other and a color is bleeding, don't push the color back in with your colorless blender. Push the color back in with the lightest color of whatever object it's bleeding into. So for example, if my orange was on top of my uh, lemon and it was bleeding into my lemon, I would use my lightest yellow color to push the orange back to where it needed to go. So all of these, we're not even doing any flicking, we're not doing anything like that. We're just layering the color and then going back over our lightest color, or our darkest color, we're going back over our darkest color with our lightest color to lighten it up and get everything to blend the way that we want. We're still going to get a little bit of dimension, we're still going to get um, some color variation so that it looks like there's a light source, but we're not going to do a whole bunch of fancy coloring or colors layering on top of each other. We're just going to keep it really simple. And this is a way that you can get coloring that you're happy with that still looks the way that it, that you want it to look on your card without you having to own all the markers, without you having to know all the tricks, without having to do, you know, hundreds of hours of practice. And I know that sounds like, oh my gosh, who practices for hundreds of hours? Um, I do, because I've been making cards with Copic markers for, what, upwards of seven years now? So 
over time, I'm getting better with my Copic coloring, just like you will get better with your Copic coloring. So if you are just starting out, don't be so hard on yourself. It takes all of us time. If you looked at my Copic coloring from when I first started, it doesn't look anything like the way that I Copic color now. So here with the leaves, I'm still just doing the same thing, but I'm treating each individual leaf separately. So I'm keeping my darkest colors on my left, my lightest colors on my right, um, just like I'm doing with everything else. For the uh, peach color, this is a different color combination. I wanted that peachy, peachy pink color, but I didn't really have anything in my arsenal that wasn't that was going to give me that. So I'm using a combination of a YR02, a R32, and an R24. The reason why these are going to work together is because we're looking at that last number. So it's a YR02 ends in two, an R32 ends in two, and then an R34 or 24, which ends in four. Four is close enough to two that they're going to blend. This will be the only one, and I'm going to be honest with you because I believe in being transparent, that I don't love the blending on because of the way the peach is drawn and having to do this where there's no flicking. Um, it makes it really challenging to get dimension where it should go. There should be dimension right where that line is drawn to create the shape of the peach. So in order to go back in and get that, I'm going to use do the same thing. I'm going to use my lightest color. I'm going to use that YR02 to go in and create a highlight on the left-hand side. And then I'm going to use the R24 to go in and create a shadow so that there is still a little bit of color, um, a little bit of dimension, a darker color there, so that it does mix it up a little bit. For the watermelon, I'm going to use the same reds that I'm going to use for the strawberry. I'm just going to do them um, just a little bit differently. Instead of completely covering everything up, I am going to leave a band of white, and this is just to mimic the rind of the watermelon. I have another trick for this with the colorless blender, and we'll come back to that. So, um, you know, basically just everything the same, just, you know, reworking your darker colors with your lighter colors until you get a blend that you're happy with. Um, if you don't like it and you're unhappy with it, give it a minute, let it dry, rework it with your lighter colors, and see if you can remove some of what you don't like. Sometimes it takes um, a long time and we all have to practice, um, but don't feel like you're like, I tried this one time and I'm a failure. That's not how this works. Keep going. We all fail in the beginning. Just keep going. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. You know, all that jazz. So, we're going to have a little bit of story time. Um, there's been a lot going on. I was sick. Caitlin was sick. You guys saw if you watched on my channel, um, on my community page that I posted a picture of her. But we're going to start at the very beginning. So this is going to be like two-part story time because there's so much that happened. There's no way that I'll be able to fit it all in. So let me go back to last Friday. Not like four days ago, like 14 days ago. And my little Miss Caitlin presented with a runny nose and a cough. This is pretty normal for her. She does go to daycare. Um, so that poor baby has been congested on and off pretty consistently since February. So she's still happy. She's still eating. We're still getting the same amount of, you know, wet and dirty diapers. There, there doesn't seem to be anything outside of the norm except for... She has this little bit of a cough, a little bit of a runny nose. That's on Friday. On Monday, I got up on Monday morning and I had like full-blown body aches. I was, the night before when I was in bed, I was freezing. Like I was curled up in the fetal position underneath my blankets. I was freezing. Um, back to the card and the coloring real quick. So here, I'm not filling this entirely in. I'm leaving a little bit of white. I'm just adding in the lightest color of my yellow. And this is going to help add to the transparency. The seeds I did in the Y08, which is my mid-tone, as well as the rind, I did that as well. Um, but we're going to use the colorless blender to help make this look a little bit more transparent um, by going over the 
yellow portion and just kind of blending that in to the white so that it's a little bit lighter. We're going to use that same trick with the colorless blender to just go around the edge of the watermelon so that the white blends into the red a little more. So Monday morning, I wake up. I am so sick. So sick. I felt congested but my nose wasn't running. I wasn't coughing. I was either freezing or sweating through my clothes. I did not have a fever, um, but I was just exhausted. I was so absolutely exhausted. Um, so Monday, like I tried to push through, rally like I normally do. Um, here we're using the white gel pen. My preferred white gel pen is the Jelly Roll, um, but you use whatever works for you. I'm going to fill in those little dot details that are on the fruit, and then I'm also going to add my own, just little lines of highlights, which can help kind of give your images just a little more life, a little more interest. Um, another thing I'm going to do with the white gel pen is I'm going to use it to draw lines inside my slice of lemon to help add to that transparency look um, because you would typically see that in the cells of a lemon slice. So um, Monday I try to push through. I was in the middle of cooking dinner and like I could not stand. If I kept standing, I felt like I was going to pass out. And I told Eric, I was like, you're going to have to finish making dinner. Like it's bad. So I went to bed that night when Caitlin went to bed and that was at eight o'clock. I did not get back out of bed until 645 the next morning. Like that, I was so sick. Once I got her ready for, um, daycare because she's still just she's fine she's she's fine um here i'm going to be using these same copa colors that match the background just to fill in some dots in the background the stencils um it just felt like that there was a lot of empty white space and i wanted to fill that in and i'm just going to do that with some colorful dots um to help make the background more interesting so um i get her ready for daycare eric takes her i lay down on the couch I laid on that couch until 10 p.m. that night. Like, I did not do anything. Awful. Felt terrible. Still alternating between sweating and chills. I took a COVID test. It was negative. Even though we just had COVID, like, I wanted to make sure it was negative. I was like, this is some kind of cold, man, because I could not remember the last time I was this sick. For this um, kind of like rainbow confetti background, I really like to have things framed out. You don't have to do this. This is just a me thing. And so I'm using a T-square ruler and uh, my EK Success journaling pen to just draw a frame around this. Again, it's me, not you. I can't help it. I like to have things look a certain way. So um, that was on Tuesday on Wednesday, I started to feel a little bit better, still not 100%, but a little bit better. Wednesday was the first day that Caitlin had a fever. So she did that. I mean, there was something going on there. Gave her some Tylenol. We're still eating and drinking. We still have the same amount of, um, you know, wet and dirty diapers. Here, I'm just going to go ahead and stamp the sentiments in black, and then I'm going to use the coordinating dies to trim those out for both cards. Um, so we gave her Tylenol. She slept normal. Thursday, when she got up, she would not eat. Now, a seven-month-old baby typically needs between, um, I think it's like 24 and 36 ounces, and my little girl has been a good eater her whole life, so she's usually eating around 48 ounces. So for her not to be interested in food, that's like a whole thing. I'm still sick. She is now obviously getting worse. We make a uh, appointment with her pediatrician and we decide that Eric is going to take her in um, and I'm going to stay home, which normally I would never miss one of her doctor's appointments, but I'm like half dead here. So for the card, um, putting them together, I chose to pop up some of the elements and leave the other ones flat. So I popped up the sentiment in both cards and then the fruit that was the closest. So the watermelon, the strawberry, and the orange, those are all popped up on foam. Um, so he just we decide that she's going to go. I'm going to stay home. Um, she did not sleep great the night before. Um 
it just kind of was what it was. Clearly, she's starting to not feel well. So I had gotten up with her in the middle of the night the night before, and she didn't go back to bed, I think, until like 4 a.m. And her appointment was at 10.30. So I went to bed. Eric took her to her doctor's appointment. I woke up to him calling me saying that they took her pulse ox and they were getting low oxygen and that she was being transported by ambulance to the main hospital. So I was like, okay, I will meet you there. And he's like, you cannot drive. And I was like, all right, I'll have one of my parents drive me there. And he's like, Kelly, I don't think they'll let you in. I don't think they'll let you in because of how sick you are. So I was like, I don't even know what to do with myself. Like, I just was just so heartbroken because like, but I'm her mom. Like, how will they not let me in? I'm her mom, <laughs> you know? And it's not that my husband's not capable of taking care of her. Of course he is. Um, you know, he's a great dad. He's doing a big up job. But like when your kid is sick, you just want to be there to take care of them. So we, he goes, he's like, let me at least get there and see what the situation is going on. And then I will call you back. So what do I do? Of course, I get off the phone with him and I immediately call my mom who is like, okay, I'll, you know, I'll just come over and sit with you until we figure out what's going on. So she does, she comes over and sits with me. Um, and then I'm, you know, pretty much just waiting for his phone call. So unfortunately, we're going to end story time there and we will pick it up with the next video. So here I'm just adding some glitter, uh, clear glitter to the fruit. Again, not necessary, but if you know me, then you know I don't need to give you any sort of explanation. And then that's it. These are, both cards are done. I think they're super fun for um, summer and, you know, hopefully gave you some tips that you can use for your Copa coloring. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.